Hi, I'm Megan from Sew and Tell Australia. In this video, I'll be reviewing the Bagstock Designs Pelican Tote Bag. In this pattern review, I'm going to be looking at all the different options of the Pelican tote bag, as well as any construction tips on how to get the best looking bag. I know bags can be a little bit scary, but I promise you, once you get started, it's really difficult to stop. The Pelican tote bag can be a really simple bag that you can use for everyday shopping, or you can also really jazz it up and make it a bit more of an outgoing luxe handbag. The options really are quite endless for this one. Some of the features of the bag are that it has an interior zip, so you can have all your little bits and pieces and an exterior zip, which also means you've got that extra added space for putting anything extra and any extra pieces that you might need. The finished measurements of the bag are 15 inch by 12 inch by three inch. So it's quite a decent sized bag and you can fit quite a little bit in there. The one I made, I was actually able to get my laptop inside it, which is really handy for anyone who's out working. So I really think that's quite a valuable aspect to have a decent sized tote bag. The pattern itself comes with over 20 pages of detailed instructions, which I think is really great when you're looking at bags. As I said, they can be quite scary. So to have that really detailed instruction booklet just gives you that little extra sense of security when you're putting it together. It's designed for a few different bases. You could use a quilting cotton, you can use canvas, you can use drill, you can use leather or synthetic leathers. There's so many different things you can use. You could even use a cotton lycra or a sports performance as long as you really stabilize that fabric with a good quality stabilizer or foam backing. As long as you've got those things, I really think there's most things you could make this bag out of. There's a couple of different options with this bag, which is something I also really like. So it's aimed at beginner sewers, someone who has a little bit of knowledge about patterns. So not someone who's probably just got the machine out of their box, but if you've got a little bit of an understanding about patterns, then I think you'll be pretty right with this, this pattern. Um, you just need some basic skills. It is a free pattern, which everybody loves free. We all like that. And it has a number of add-on options, which are also free, which is something that I think is really handy and a big plus to this pattern. So it has the two zippers, the exterior and the interior, as I've talked about. And then you can also get the add-ons, which either makes it a top closing bag, or you can do the recessed zipper with fancy straps, which that's the one I chose to do because who doesn't love fancy straps? And also I just am a huge fan of a recessed zipper in a bag. I just think it makes it look really nice and it means that it's sort of holding everything in if it accidentally gets tipped over. So I'm a fan of the recessed zipper. With the way this bag is put together with the different um, options, it makes it really easy to then mix and match to a style that suits you. So like I said, you could make it really simple as a shopping tote or by choosing a few more luxe looking prints, you can really make a bag that that stands out quite a lot and I think is quite a luxe looking bag. As you'll see from my one, I really think that, you know, using the gold hardware and, and putting in those sort of muted tones really stepped it up a lot. But you can equally make one that's just fun and fun to look at with bright, colorful prints. You know, if you don't uh, use an interfacing, it's, it's an easy tote bag and it comes together really quickly. So I think that's a, a big plus. Let's take a look at the few other things you need to make this bag. So my number one tip when sewing with vinyl in particular is using Microtex needles. I cannot recommend using Microtex enough because with the vinyl you want to make sure you are piercing as small a hole as possible as it doesn't recover like normal fabric does. You want to be using something like a Microtex which has a very fine point and is going to pierce through with the smallest hole possible. So if you're making yours out of vinyl, I highly recommend Microtex needles. I'll link a link down below to get yours. And if you're not using just normal fabric, then just make sure you're using a, a needle that is appropriate for your weight of fabric. 
A couple of other things, again, if you're using vinyl, make sure you're using clips because you don't want to be marking your vinyl. But if you're using normal fabrics, then you can use pins. Uh, in terms of hardware, you want to make sure you've got some zipper tape. You can use normal zips if you want to. I just like using zipper tape because there's so many different options. Again, I'll link some below of the stores that I like to use. And if you're getting zipper tape, then you'll need zip pulls. And then in terms of bag hardware, you do need a magnetic closure if you're doing the magnetic closure version. If not the recessed zipper, you just need some more zipper tape. Um, you can use some rivets on the straps if you're doing the fancy straps. Just gives a little bit more stability once you've sewn them in. So I used eight mil rivets with an eight mil post for mine. They worked well. And then uh, with the zip, you wanna make sure you are using a zipper foot. Very, very important to get your zipper foot. Most machines should have it. So just make sure you've got your zipper foot. And most importantly, I should say, you are just using your normal sewing machine. So you don't need to use a cover stitch or an overlocker or anything like that your normal sewing machine will be able to sew this. If your machine does have trouble getting over the leather or any of the fabrics that you're using, you can use a walking foot. Most machines do have one or have one available for purchase. And if you're using the vinyl and you're having trouble with your foot sticking to it, you can just use something as simple as baking paper to put under the foot and it just helps that machine or the, the fabric and foot glide along. And then you just tear the baking paper away and it's perfect. If you're using fabrics, I recommend uh, interfacing or using a foam to back onto your fabrics. Just gives it that little bit of extra stability. Unless of course you do want quite a floppy bag, you can choose not to interface or foam line it if you want to. If you're using vinyls, you won't need to interface or foam because the vinyl has quite a stiff nature to it anyway. In terms of putting the zips in, I highly recommend getting some double-sided double wash away tape. It is really handy to use when you're putting your zips in. Just means that you can have it sitting there and it's not gonna move while you're sewing it. I know people can be quite afraid of sewing in zips. So this just really helps when you're putting zips in. Same for any garment really. So again, I'll link some options below from where you can get your double-sided tape. The last thing you'll need is your friction pen or tailor's chalk, which will just help when you're marking out those welt pockets and a few other bits and pieces. So now that we know what we need, let's go through some construction tips on how to get the best looking bag for you. A really important part of putting this bag together is making sure you've read the instructions thoroughly first. If this has a full 20 page booklet of instructions and pictures on how to put it together, plus the add-ons if you decide to do the add-ons. So have a read through those really thoroughly before you put it together. It will just help give you an idea about what the next step is so that when you're putting it together, you can go, oh yeah, okay, I need to make sure I'm doing this because that step's coming up later. So it's really important to make sure you're doing that. And also with doing the add-ons, some of the pieces change. So when you're doing the recess zipper, your lining piece is actually shorter than the one that comes with the basic bag. So you just wanna make sure you're reading through what you, what you really need and what you need to cut out. Saves you mistakenly cutting out something you didn't need. Like I've already mentioned, if you are using fabrics, make sure you interface to stabilize them with either the interface or the foam. It's just gonna help give it that extra look and also hold up to what you're using it for. Another tip I wanna give you is to go slow. Take your time with this. Bag making is a different game space to garment making. So going slow really will help with anything that you're a little bit unsure about. Also making sure you use the Microtex needles, as I said, and if you're, you're having trouble getting your machine to go through it, you can always use the hand crank on your machine. So just here, always making sure you're going forward as well. Don't ever go backwards on a machine and just hand cranking through some bits that might be a little bit thicker than the others will help you get that needle through without breaking it because trust me, I've broken needles and it's not good. You can use normal thread on this one, but if you want to use a thicker thread, perhaps for top stitching, you can if you'd like to. There's a few different thicker top stitch threads out there. I know Gutemann do. Uh, with Rassant, you can always double up the thread if you wanted something looking a little bit thicker. Otherwise, normal thread is fine. That's whatever I've used, so it doesn't really bother me. 
Like I mentioned before as well, using clips. So that's just a tip to make sure you're using clips when you're putting it together. So you're not marking the fabric or you're not marking your vinyl in any way if you're using vinyl. Otherwise you can just use pins as per normal. My big construction tip for this one is to get a nice finish. Take your time with the welt pocket. So really making sure you mark it out, you clip close to those corners without going through the stitches, giving it a really good press. That's gonna give you great results for your welt pocket. And also with the top stitching. I think top stitching is what really makes a bag. So taking your time to really make sure you're top stitching nicely and getting an even look. Particularly if you're using vinyl, you only get one shot at it. If you unpick your top stitching, you're going to see the feet, the holes because it's already marked it. So making sure you take your time when top stitching, I think really can make a big difference with how your final bag looks. If you do have any problems with the construction, it is actually the featured pattern in my Sewing Corner membership this month, February 2023. So you can always join that and it's a tutorial that's part of your membership and I go through step by step, making sure that you really understand how it works and it's a really great tutorial. So I'll link that below as well. Okay, I've teased you enough about what the pattern does, what you need, how to put it together. Let's take a look at my bag. Here we have my finished bag. Isn't she beautiful? So as you can see, I chose to use a really beautiful like latte looking litchi leather and I've used an accented vinyl on the sides. This is from Clover & Co Fabrics. This one's from Dreamy Bag Hardware. Again, I'll link everything in below. And as we've talked about, I chose to do the recessed zipper like this with fancy bag straps. So again, this is Dreamy Bag Hardware. This month, if you join my Sewing Corner membership, you do get 30% off these oval backed connectors and they look so beautiful. I'm so, so happy with how they came, how they turned out. So I chose the fancy bags and then I've got beautiful gold colored hardware and I got a little one of a kind badge there, which looks really good. But the bag hardware just came up so beautiful. And then I've got rose ones. And then on the inside, let's have a look. I've got a little handbag pull. So it's quite a decent handbag. It's got a lot of room in it. It's got the pocket over here. And I can fit quite a bit in here. It can actually fit my laptop quite easily, which I'm happy about. I have a 13 inch MacBook. And it still has heaps of room in there, even after I've put my laptop in there. So I can still fit my wallet, my phone, a drink bottle, quite a bit in there if I wanted. So very, very happy with how this one turned out. There you have my review of the Pelican Tote by Bagstock Designs. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it inspires you to make one yourself. As I've mentioned throughout the video, I'll link everything that I've mentioned down there, including a link to the bag and a link to my membership platform, The Sewing Corner, which is a great place if you wanna go and connect with other like-minded sewists, get help and tips from me, and have some really awesome tutorials at your fingertips as well. So I'll link all that below. Make sure you also subscribe to my channel so that you can get any future ones. I've got quite a few different piece, bits and pieces on the channel. Make sure you check it out and follow along on my socials, which I'll put up on the screen as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.